Oh boy, this one's gonna be interesting. Today you're gonna be taking a look at a reverse engineered Windows operating system. Now this is an open source system written completely from the ground up to natively run Windows applications and drivers. So this is not built on Windows, it's not using Windows source code, and it's not built on Linux. And this thing has been around for 24 years. And you will be wondering, how the f have I never heard about this operating system? Well, maybe because even after 24 years, this thing is still in version alpha 0.414. Yeah, so the development process is not going that fast. I would say this is a real commitment to develop an operating system for 24 years and it's still not finished, not, not even halfway there. When it comes to operating systems, you pretty much have three choices. You either go with Windows, Mac, or Linux. So I'm really excited to take a look at this thing. And I wonder what kind of software can you run on it? Now, I've yet to look at this thing, but I looked at some people talking about it and apparently they said it's a big hassle just to get it to run. That reminds me of the good old days of Windows XP. One interesting thing about this operating system, it's extremely small. The ISO file is about 130 megabytes, which is one of the smallest I've ever seen. I mean, you can find some weird Linux distros that are Omega small, but they probably don't have a graphical interface and they're probably designed to be running small. But for a full-fledged operating system that's supposed to run Windows applications on Windows drivers, only 130 megabytes is extremely small. The installation process only took like seconds. <laughs> Even the installation process is like copied from Windows. Oh, we've got themes! Classic, Lotus, Lunar, Mesa. I think I'll go with Classic. Bro, this is like a one-to-one -one copy of Windows setup dialog back in the early 2000s. Oh, I thought, I thought it was a progress bar, but hey, it's just it's press finish. <laughs> why don't you just finish it? Why, do you, why is it a progress bar? Since it's built to natively run Windows applications and drivers, you can actually install Windows VirtualBox guest editions, which is like the drivers for the operating system. So I guess I will try and do that. I wonder if we can just install this. We need more memory to enable that export. So I'm going to actually try to enable that. And it crashed. So we are off to a good start. All right, let's, let's see if we can fix this. But I... I mm, I don't know if I should fix this just because of how fast this thing boots. I might as well just I might as well just try and uh, reinstall the operating system. I'm gonna try to speed run this. English, yes, next, 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 next. This thing installs so fucking fast you can pretty much just install every time on boot. And it will still install faster than Windows booting up. Okay, so this is the second install since the first one crashed. And we're gonna try and see if we can install the drivers. And it's f***ed. Oh boy. All right, so after taking a look at the wiki, I think I know what's happening. I think I gave this machine too much hardware. According to the wiki, you should not give this machine any more than 64 megabytes of video memory. You should also not give this machine more than one core. I really hope it's not gonna crash. It worked! Can I adjust the resolution? Why do we have uh, 1920 by 1080? Bro, this is the same exact menus. They didn't even bother changing anything at all. Yeah, we don't have audio drivers. So apparently, all I gotta do is just copy this and throw it into... Alright, this does not have Windows folder. It has a React OS folder. But it's trippy because it has the same folder layout as Windows, like System, System32, and Microsoft.net. So this should be the last restart, and then we are supposed to have driver set up. Well, it died. Yeah, it died. Okay, this is the fourth install right now. I should definitely should have read their wiki before doing this. So, so far, the experience is looking very familiar. Do we have a network connection? Oh, we do. We have a one gigabit network connection. That's impressive. We have a command prompt, and it looks exactly like Windows command prompt. Uh, I wonder if the command is going to be the same. I don't know. Like, I mean, this is very universal, so it should probably just work. Yep, it works the way as expected. All right, the ver shows the version. React OS service back to. Does it copy the same commands? System info. 
apparently it does use the same uh, you can use the same commands you can use on Windows on this Alright, so one thing, we don't have a web browser do we have a web browser in the package manager? that's the question well, we have Firefox 48 I'm gonna install that right, and since we are here in the package manager let's see what other packages we can install Audio, Audacity that's impressive Spotify Winamp Oh, it actually downloads Spotify from archive.org So this is not even a modified version of Spotify This is just an older version of Spotify Okay, I'm gonna have a list of all the programs I have a big feeling that After this installation, the system will probably crash Okay, so now we have a web browser, I wonder Can we just install anything from the internet? If I can get Discord to work Then this will be a miracle Do we have a task manager? Oh, of course we do Oops Uh oh it's it's like sticking to my mouse even though I'm not clicking anything. Oh no, it's already breaking apart. <laughs> so let's leave that there. As I was saying, the memory is, is really don't move. Memory is really low even though we're downloading a lot of packages in the background. Hmm. What else can we try on here that's not in the package manager? Um I almost want to cancel this just because of how long it's taken. Do we have paint in here? They should have paint. Yes, we do. This is slow. And this is definitely on the struggle bus. One core is just. That one single cord is just trying its best to get this thing to work. Yeah, I have to wait for this thing to install before I can actually do anything because this thing is slow. Let's give it one restart and let's hope this thing does not die. F no. What is it this time? I knew it. As soon as you install one thing, this thing just fing dies. That's exactly why I created a backup. So I can delete this, move in all files, and then I can clone this. Clone, clone. So this is their own driver. So the only thing is installed here is their own driver. So if this is, if this crashes, I don't know what I'm gonna do. This should work. It's their own driver for their own operating system. Whew. Wait, it actually booted. It actually booted this time. Okay, so let's take this a step by step. Let's not overwhelm this machine. Also, one thing I wanted to look at is the memory usage. This thing is using 80 megabytes of RAM after the drivers are installed, which is really fucking impressive. Look, at just moving my mouse expects CPU usage to 100%. So stable is not the war to use on this operating system. I wonder how big is it after installation? Yeah, two gigabytes after installation on drivers. Windows is like 20, 25. Uh, Android is about 15, same thing with iOS. So take that for comparison. All right, all right. So now I only have the drivers and Firefox. Let's see how the experience is gonna be like. Can we check Twitch? Twitch might be a challenge to run. Oh, I've been waiting for a few minutes and I just gave up. I don't think I'm going to try to open Twitch. I wonder if changing the browser might help. Okay, now this is a browser that's built on purpose to work with ancient operating systems. Or ancient Windows operating system, let's say. So this should be fine. Yeah. Oh, you can't just full screen it. Oh, look at these effects. These are some nice animations you got there. Bro, can I open anything? Yeah, it does. Oh boy. Oh boy. Let's see if this thing is gonna open Twitch. Now, the reason I use Twitch because Twitch is like, it's somewhat heavy to run on all the computers. But this, this is doing a lot better than Firefox so far. How about YouTube? I'm afraid to have two tabs open because I feel like this thing is gonna crash at any moment now. We're pretty much locked at 100% speed usage all the time. And the browser for us. Oh boy!
Yeah, if it's taking that long to load the web page and it's still not fucking open, so I don't think it's gonna be able to play it to play a Twitch stream. How about YouTube? YouTube should be lighter to run. Your browser cannot play this video. Shit! I've waited 15 minutes for this web page to load. My browser cannot play it. And for some reason, it looks like it's having a seizure, just flickering left and right. How about Discord? That's very unlikely, but you know what? I'm gonna try it anyways. If I drag this down, one, two, three, four. Yeah, it took about four seconds for that minute to actually go down. Let's try this again. Let's try to drag this to the other corner. One, two, three, four. Yeah, about four seconds it takes to move a window around. Hey, trying to open anything other than just a basic HTML page with a little bit of text is definitely a challenge. Maybe I should just stick to the package manager, but I kind of like the challenge of trying to install software online. What would be a very Windows thing to try? You know what would be interesting? Trying to get an antivirus to install on this system. I, I think this will be an interesting experience, but judging by the fact that I can't even open a web page, I feel like installing an antivirus is going to be an extreme challenge. But you know what? I'm going to f***ing try it. So I'm going to go with Avast Windows XP version. Oh, they have a separate version for Windows XP. So in theory, this should work, but this is not Windows. It just, it can maybe run Windows software from the early 2000s. So it can maybe run this software. <laughs> oh boy, this is not a standalone ins installer. This is a, like a web installer. So this might take a really long time. I wonder what it's going to say. <laughs> I thought it's going to be like, what the f is operating system? Let's see, install. Oh, and it's not supported. All right, so it already has checks in place for weird events or weird installations like this. Okay, you know what antivirus is going to work? Protogen 360. Oh, yeah. This is the real antivirus. Yeah, the entire machine resources is just trying to download this file. Remember, moving my mouse back the CPU is to 100%. So imagine having an antivirus running on this machine. Bro, I'd be recording here for like a couple of fucking hours just because of how slow the system is. Every single task on this machine takes like 15 minutes from like visiting the web page to downloading to installing. It's just such a fucking pain. Let's see if it's gonna work. Well, it allows me to install it. Ah. The installation files are corrupt. Like I wanted to make this video interesting. I wanted to do something interesting with this machine. I wanted to have some wow factor. It's either like in, in, a, in a destruction form or in terms of like uh, capabilities. I thought it would be funny to install an antivirus to this system because it will probably break it. Like I thought that would be funny. But the problem is this thing is so slow that I don't think we're gonna get anything out of it. If it was infected by a virus, you will probably die from old age before the virus is able to do anything. Yeah, imagine having one of these machines as your work machine. Try to use Microsoft Teams on this thing. Yeah, just uh, wait a second, let me uh, turn on my dial-up connection. If we can't install an antivirus, how about we try to install a system cleaner, one of those bulkier ones. There we go. Antiviruses are quite hard to run because they have a lot of checks in place to make sure that they are, you know, running in the right environment. And a Windows cleaning software thingy utility I think it will work and there's a good chance it will also break the system and I think that will be, you know, the end of it. After all this waiting, it just does not work. I doubt the compatibility mode will do anything in this case, but this is like my only option right now. Yeah, it doesn't work. Well, I've had enough of this machine. I think... We tried every possible way to make this thing usable. Nothing will work on it except the couple dozen software they provide in the package manager. And try and run anything that's slightly modern on it is pretty much impossible. You can't even open the web page. As soon as you try to do anything out of the box, then boom, this thing just blue screens and you have to like reinstall all over again.
It's really fun for me to try different weird operating systems and try to mess around with things, but this thing is, oh boy, it's just like, it was chugging. All right, now we can say goodbye to the, this machine, give it its last reset, watch it fucking freak out. Yes. This is the end. Time to say goodbye for this, for this poor thing. Time to delete the reactor S clone, 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 because I had to clone it multiple times because it breaks every fucking time. Goodbye, my friend. I'll see you in a different lifetime. I really hope so someday in the very far future, when I'm like 73 years old, grandpa, minding my own business and then see an article of this system actually coming out of Alpha. <laughs> Even though this machine is a complete piece of shit and it's utterly fucking useless, I still, I still applaud these people for trying to make something different and I still applaud for these people for trying to do this for the past 24 years. Nonetheless, I hope you enjoy watching me struggle trying to get this thing to work. If you want to see more weird operating systems and more weird uh, tech videos then be sure to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful day.